What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the Madden 24 St. Louis Sentinels franchise. That is right. Welcome back. We are here in Wild Card Weekend. Yes, indeed, your St. Louis Sentinels are an NFL playoff team. Boom, boom, boom. If you guys are fired up, as always, for a playoff run, please like the video, subscribe if you are not subscribed. If you like Madden and or football content, this is the channel for you, I promise. So here in Wild Card Weekend, we are taking on the Carolina Panthers in our first ever playoff game. A team that we lost to recently, as a matter of fact, 34 to 28 back in week 15. And that was a game where we lost in overtime and a game where I forgot the overtime rules. Fun times. Yeah, fun times. But moving off of that. So this is a bit of a revenge game for us today. Looking to atone for our previous mistakes, but taking a look at the playoff bracket here, seeing how things shaked up around the NFL, starting with the NFC side here, of course, the Dallas Cowboys, Madden's favorite team in the world, number one seed, surprise, surprise, no shocker there. And the first game on the docket will be the San Francisco 49ers and the New York Giants. Giants had that six seed spot for a while, but we actually jumped them with that win last week. So very cool there. Of course, we're taking on the Panthers, three and six seed, and then the Bears and the Eagles, the four and the five. So that's similar to uh, Pan uh, Tampa Bay Bucks were four, Eagles were five in real life. Eagles lost that game, so maybe another upset on the horizon. We'll have to monitor that and see how things play out here. And then on the AFC side, we got the Buffalo Bills Madden cover athlete Josh ah. Allen. And his team are going to be the number one seed. And then Bengals and Chiefs, two and seven. So rematch of the last two previous AFC championship games. Of course, the Bengals went on to lose their Super Bowl. The Chiefs went on to win theirs. So rematch there between KC and the Bengals. Three and six are the Ravens and the Chargers. And then four and five are the Titans and the Patriots. The Vrabel Bowl. We got a weak link in the team. What? Tell me it's my defense without telling me it's my defense. I mean, there's no doubt about it. A weak link in this Sentinels team is definitely our defense. But the reporter says, Coach, you find yourself in the playoffs despite fielding a defensive unit near the bottom of the league. No, it is the bottom of the league. And I think for today, um, we're going to have to try to think back to that last Panthers game. I think that Miles Sanders was the one that kind of tore us up. So we're going to say slow down the run. We have to be able to slow down the run, keep the gain short and force their offense into a longer down and distance situations to simplify the game. Yeah, I think I want to say Miles Sanders killed us in that game. So beat the Panthers and hold them to less than 75 rushing yards. Apparently is going to be our key to success today. Coach, you're headed into your first playoff game. That's right. Playoff success often makes or break a career. How important is your first playoff win? So, you know, Coach Smalls, you know me, guys. I'm a cool cucumber. We're going to play this thing cool. Every game is important, and when you're playing a playoff team, you have to bring your best. There's no guarantees when you play teams that are this good. And surely, St. Louis Sentinels, we cannot afford to guarantee a victory because I wouldn't be surprised if this game went either way. So, how did we get to this point here, you might ask? Well, let's take a look at our schedule and just kind of see what happened because for a while there it was looking like uh we weren't gonna make it so and if you guys watch previous episodes you know why these played twos are here no i wasn't doing anything fishy or crazy my ps2 uh, ah! ps2 this is not a ps2 my ps5 was overheating quite a bit and it's been pretty okay since but if we take a look at the last we won the last four four out of the last five of the games that we played and the only team that we lost to Guess who? The Carolina Panthers, 28 to 34. And also very strange that uh, look how often we scored 34 points, 31 in this last game against the Browns. But yeah, I mean, we've been on an amazing stretch as of late, but we lost to the Panthers and we played the Panthers today. So we're going to have to contain Miles Sanders that much. I know. But I want to say that Bryce Young also had a pretty good game, too. So I think that today we're going to start out. And I mean, look, guys, their offense is not good in terms of stats. But we know here in Madden that does not matter. And they want us to contain the QB scramble. No, that's not going to happen. We're going to defend the outside run at least to start. And then my focus, if you've watched the last couple episodes, you know Dudley Saxon has been a dude. So we're going to start running outside. That is going to be our game plan focus for today. Big upgrade for Dudley Saxton. That is much needed. We're gonna continue to go elusive back because we know that Dudley 
It's just so shifty and has the moves. He has the moves like Jagger, basically, is what I'm trying to tell you. And he's been on a tear lately, and I think he's going to need to continue to do that today. And the other guy who's going to also need to continue to be on a tear is your NFC Offensive Player of the Week last week, J.J. Ford. 344 pass yards, four pass TDs, but the big stat, zero interceptions and i think he's gonna need to have zero interceptions today if we hope to win our first ever playoff game i gotta be honest guys i am excited also a little bit nervous too jesus my heart is beating so fast right now don't know what to expect i want to keep this playoff push going but if you guys are excited to see the st louis sentinels in their first ever playoff game please like the video subscribe to the channel i drop madden 24 content weekly you will not be disappointed but without further ado guys let's get into our first ever playoff game in the wild card round here and get ready for the game super wild card weekend gonna be held here at bank of america stadium in Carolina and here come the home Carolina Panthers hoping to put the hurting on them this is uh don't know if Bryce Young made the playoffs last year in this franchise doesn't really matter because uh, it's a battle of the youngsters with Bryce Young of course out of Alabama JJ Ford the rookie out of Fresno State so we got Bama and Fresno State and it looks like Bama is going to get the ball first as we are going to kick it off here and just hoping for a good one, man. I got to say, I didn't really expect us to be here. I kind of did, but kind of towards the end there, before we went on that four out of five tear, you know, it was a struggle to stay 500. So I don't really want our playoff journey to end this early. Will it? Will it not? Stick around to find out. Bryce Young going to start this drive out under center here, coming out single back, and it is going to be Sanders. We did, of course, make the focus to defend the outside run. And what's he do on that first play? He goes inside, which I am not surprised about in the slightest. That's Madden knowing exactly what my uh, every move is here. So uh, Bryce coming out single back again. Let's see if he goes back to Sanders. He is. This time it is an outside run. We can't get there. The blocking is just superb. Thought we had a chance there. Emmanuel Forbes finally wraps up Miles Sanders there, but it wasn't until the first down marker was moved. We'll guess pass on this one. Young coming out shotgun here with three wide receivers and Sanders to his right. Let's see what he does. Going to have to try to dial up some pressure on him. He is going to kick it out to the tight end, Tommy Trumbull. And I just completely whiffed, or that's Gerald Everett, my bad. Tommy, Gerald Everett, I guess, made his way to Carolina. Thought that was Tommy Trumbull. It was not. And I whiffed a tackle there, which, you know, that's what I do. You guys watch these episodes, you know that should come as no shock. So we're going to send a little bit of pressure here as Bryce Young stays in the shotgun. It's going to be another give to Sanders. He has the inside there running it right up the gut for a nice gain of seven. Now, remember, we are without Chase Young and also James Smith Williams, too. Or no, James Smith Williams, Dante Fowler. That's who it is. We're without Dante Fowler. So our defensive line is a little scarce, but... There's a guy who's not scarce with the TFLs, Jonathan Allen. And there is a look at our injured Sentinels. We definitely caught the injury bug late in the season, which you never like to see. But, you know, the old adage, next man up mentality, right? So key third down here. Can we get Bryce Young and these Panthers off of the field? That's the question. And oh, Jartavius Martin, Quad Martin had a chance, but it was fumbled. Nonetheless, who fumbled that? I thought we had a chance for the pick there for sure. KJ Hamler, who is on this team now, fumbled it. And let's see if that's clean. I think that that's going to be, that's coming back. That's that's coming back. Unless I, unless there's something I didn't see. There was a lot of bodies in the way there. But, yeah, don't even worry about it. Getting a look at J.J. Ford's stats, it's not going to matter. I mean, we'll look at him anyways. Why not? J.J. Ford had a great season. 5,293 yards is ridiculous. Also, what, what's ridiculous is the 21 interceptions. But this is coming back. Yeah, I mean, told you guys. Told you guys. Yeah, no question. I saw that one plain as day. But Bryce Young is coming out empty. So I think we're going to dial up pressure again. Some of it has to get home. Eventually, oh, man, Emmanuel Forbes. Nice breakup. The man who led the NFL in picks. Only finished with nine, and, you know, you're probably saying only. What are you talking about? That's great. Well, he had six of them in back-to-back -back games, and that was early on in the season, too. 
So it is a little disappointing, but still led the league in picks. I will certainly take it. Somebody please get Sanders. He did go outside, tried to juke back inside. Justin Hayward was there, the rookie out of Miami, our new star development uh, outside linebacker or middle linebacker, whatever we have him at these days. And here we go. Big third down again. Can we hold the Panthers to a field goal? Bryce Young just going to throw it into the stands. Ben, but don't break. The Sentinels defense did step up when it needed to. And I would say holding the Panthers to a field goal here in Bank of America Stadium in the playoffs. Big W. Maybe St. Juice can get a block kick. He's had a few of them jaunts in this season. Doesn't get one there, but I will still take it as the end result of the drive. Forgot to take Dudley Saxton out of my uh, kick and punt returner role. Now that he's RB number one, somebody mentioned that to me in the comments. That's probably a good idea because I'll tell you what. If Dudley gets hurt, I don't know what we're going to do because Chris Rodriguez Jr. is the backup behind him. And I don't think that man has taken a singular snap all season. Don't want him to take his first one today in the wild card round of the playoffs. So let's test the outside with Dudley. See, uh, see how the weather is over there on the left side. The weather is great. It's great. It's sunshine. It's sunshine and blue skies. Oh, yeah, baby. 31 yards for Dudley on his opening carry of the game. You love to freaking see it. And I'll tell you what, I did not utilize the outside run very much with Brian Robinson. But uh, it's looking like, at least with Dudley, I don't know. I, I feel like it really wasn't there too much with Brian. Now, I didn't really try it too often but still i don't know it seems to be working like a freaking charm with dudley and that's gonna also be roughing the passer i believe don't know how jj ford got that one out but it should be roughing show me a roughing Thank you. move that ball as close to the end zone as possible should be half the distance we're gonna get the ball on the seven yard line i like it indeed and you know what i also like I also n like not doing a play action and trusting that Terry can get open on this slant, which I think he didn't. It was still a good pass, though, but also a nice breakup. Second and goal here. We're going to come out single back in our 13 personnel. Going to be looking for probably one of our tight ends to get open on this play. And it's Logan Thomas. Logan, dive into the end zone. Logan Thomas. Someone told me in the comments that he should co-share the St. Louis Savior name with Terry because when Bart Burns was out, who is back, by the way, if you didn't see him on the field, Logan Thomas stepped up and played huge. Bart Burns is still back, is back today. Logan Thomas still stepping up huge. He does not wear that C on his chest, guys, for no reason. He is a captain of this ball club, and he gets the first end zone points of the game also don't know why i said end zone points because uh aka a touchdown I, I i definitely could have said touchdown because nobody calls them end zone points you know they don't say oh bryce young with the beautiful end zone points nah just touchdown cj I'll, i i should probably just ought to call it that for the rest of this game right so second drive for the panthers we'll see if miles sanders is a big feature of this drive he certainly was in the first drive, and he gets the ball again there, but only for a modest gain of four. I'm going pressure again. You'll probably see me go pressure a lot here today, guys. I mean, unless we start getting carved up deep. It's a pick. It's Kendall Fuller. It's Kendall. Go, Kendall. Go, Kendall. We need this, Kendall. Yes. Kendall Fuller with the pick six. Put his hand in the freaking cookie jar and came away with a tasty treat. Bryce Young threw it right to him. Kendall has been getting the picks as of late. He is no stranger to those. And he was going to Adam Thielen, who's their number one wide receiver. Definitely shouldn't be saying that. But he is in real life, too, at least as of now. But Kendall Fuller allows the Sentinels to jump out to an early lead with the pick six. And this is definitely, definitely not how the first outing went against the Panthers. But so far, I am McDonald's freaking loving it. Well, that was certainly quick. Defense already back on the field here. Bryce Young with the crucial interception. Another one from Fuller. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God, Kendall. Remember, remember, remember. He has superstar development, which he got from being a defensive player of the week. 
and I got to do this because I don't I don't even know why I do this. I don't have to do this, but I just want you guys to know and you see me play like I for the most part we get dogged. This is why we have the worst defense in the league, but it's still on all Madden. OK, nothing has nothing has changed there. Nothing has changed with the sliders. And even the last couple games of the regular season, we won those games. Sure. But it was still, you know, a struggle. And I just feel the need to to show you guys. I, I want you guys to know I'm legit. There's Dudley with the 93 speed. Dudley can't be stopped. Look, I'm telling you, man, Brian Robinson set to come back in a couple games, depending on how how far, how, how real this playoff push is. Don't think he's going to be our number one back. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Third and eight here. I'm not upset with kicking a field goal, although going up 21 to three would be awesome. So maybe Bart Burns, who's back, might be able to hit him on a corner shot. Or maybe we'll just do the safe thing and check it down to Samuel, who gets very close. This may be go for it territory. They want me to kick the field goal and you know what? I'm doing it. I know, I know, I know, but it's a playoff game. I don't care how big our lead is. We've seen what teams can do in the second half against us. So I just want all the points possible just in case something sus happens. Panthers behind the sticks now coming out. I and it, this time it is going to be a play fake. Where's Bryce Young going to go? He has his receiver wide open. That was Jonathan Mingo, the former Ole Miss player who dropped that pass. And that was a crucial one, too, because that would have moved the chains for the Panthers. And now they find themselves staring down the barrel of a third and 12. Sounds like a shinedown song. No, it's not a shinedown song, but it is the reality of this game. Bryce looking to escape the pocket. And he's just going to throw it away. So what is going on with Bryce Young in this first quarter? Maybe uh, the young man is not used to being on a stage this big, but neither is J.J. Ford. Neither is Dudley Saxton. Don't know if Kendall Fuller's been there before. Not if, he, not if it was with the commanders, I don't think. But we have youngsters too, so I don't think that that's any excuse. But so far, that's how it's playing out. Final play before the end of the first. Going to be another outside run to Dudley. And the blockers are good good there as well. Oh, man, I'm loving it. Dudley with 81 yards. 81 yards in the first quarter. And remember, we don't even have our superstar right guard, Brandon Scherf. He's not even here. He's injured. I'm not even sure who's backing him up right now. I think it's Chris Paul. What? Or Braden Daniels or someone like that. But whoever it is. What I'm trying to say is it ain't Brandon Scherf, but they're playing like Brandon Scherf because Dudley is getting the holes today. And you know what? I'm just going to keep force feeding him the ball until they show me they can stop it because even on the inside runs, which was not my focus, Dudley's still killing it. Maybe a little curl here. Nothing crazy. You know, don't have to go for the home run shot necessarily. So maybe Curtis Samuel or McLaurin, they run good routes. They could be the read. We're going to try Samuel and that should be pass interference. I feel like, or roughing the passer. Thank you. This looks like it could be maybe just a shot to Terry, a high point. Possibly Bart Burns. Maybe he'll get open as well, which, oh. <laughs> Luckily, DJ Johnson got to us because Bart was getting open. Coach is saying TE attack again. It's on three pages. And at second and 10, you know, I try to rock with the coach suggestions. That is definitely what I'm going to go to. So maybe same exact play. We almost hit Bart Burns last time. Let's see if we can maybe hit him again or maybe. Oh, I missed Terry. I missed him. I missed him. But that's that's I, I was past the line of scrimmage. Oh, man, I, I had tunnel vision on Bart. I had tunnel vision on Bart and I shouldn't have because Terry was right there. Oh, it's roughing the passer. What? What? I mean, we're declining it because it's a touchdown. Whoa. I thought for sure that I was past the line of scrimmage. I thought for sure. Line of scrimmage was about the 28 and a half yard line. Let's see if I was past. No, I mean, I was right there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, of course I knew that, guys. And Bart Burns, so both of our tight ends have touchdowns now. 
And even if he would have got the touchdown, also, uh, my man's foot is uh, literally buried in the ground. So we need to get somebody out here at Bank of America Stadium and, and get this field checked out. I can't believe this, guys. If you would have told me the score was going to be 24-3, to 3, I probably would have said, yeah, I, I, J.J. Ford probably threw two interceptions, and Bryce Young's probably killing us, and yeah, we're down 24-3, to 3, but it's reversed. The opposite. Panthers can't do anything, and literally everything we call is working, whether it's a run, a pass, doesn't matter. Dudley Saxon's playing great. Our two tight ends are playing great. We're just simply cruising in this one. But again, I say it all the time. I feel like no lead is safe when you're talking about the Sentinels. Jonathan Allen says, I don't know, buddy. This lead might be pretty safe. But we've seen the second half collapses before. I know I'm trying to think the last. I think, yeah, it was the Steelers game. We were up big. Third quarter came. And I started playing super conservative and let Pittsburgh back in it. Now, we did end up winning that game still, but it was much closer than it had to be. So if that same situation here, if we get to the third quarter and we're up big, I'm not, I can't, I cannot play conservative. I, I got to play as if it's a 0-0 ball game because uh, I've just seen it happen too many times and don't want to see it happen again. Bryce Young coming out empty. So Jamin Davis is rushing. We almost got to him. Don't throw another pick, Bryce. Bryce Young and these Panthers are struggling mightily. All right, second and 10. We're coming out shotgun. Let's go ahead and just settle back into this. Need to get J.J. Ford involved a little more, I think. There's Bart Burns. Rookie. Oh, he fumbled it. No, Bart. No, Bart. No, Bart. No. No. You're not supposed to do that. Von Bell recovered it. I mean, Bart. Bart. Brother. That was clean, too. That was ultra clean that was mr clean there's no doubt about that and Br bart burns i i almost i'm gonna say brian burns bart burns so much he was hurt and, and logan thomas brian talking to you logan thomas stepped up in your stead and played really good so I, all i'm saying is we have a serviceable tight end even if you're not here so uh i mean i mean bart's not going anywhere he's a probably going to be a superstar development player because he's probably going to win offensive rookie of the year that was that was the put away drive right there and if we would have scored there we surely would have put it away and bart burns just uh coughed up the pigskin somebody get miles sanders the amador lenore and cam curl were there to meet him but now the panthers best field position they've had all game i didn't think i was going to have to really change my uh option defense to conservative but that might be what I have to do. Bryce Young looking to run again. We know he does have speed. And Bryce prevents this thing from getting out of hand as he is going to bring the Panthers up to 10. So they definitely needed that. And you see what happens, Bart? Buddy, I hope you watch the film on this because when you fumble the ball, it leads to points. Fuck! We don't want points, at least not from the Panthers. So please hold on to the ball this time. Terry up the seam here on second and 10. I feel like, uh, depending on what that safety does, might have something. Um, I don't like it, but I do like Curtis Samuel butt naked on the left side, baby. That was very weird to say, butt naked and baby in the same sentence, but I don't care. Curtis Samuel earned it. He deserved it. And he was able to get out of bounds. That was definitely much needed because you kind of felt like uh, just a sliver of momentum maybe was going back to... Carolina don't know I mean we still got momentum but there there was something there was definitely something shifting there so that was good to see four and a half to go till halftime it's gonna be a play fake we've had pressure a lot on this play Terry I'm leading it out for you Terry hangs on that's why he is St. Louis savior number one on this team I like trusting Dudley coming out of the pistol here it's not an outside run but still um the coverage they came out in is definitely very conducive to the pass so i feel like dudley should be able to find this hole here which he will no question about it with ease and more dudley is hungry he brought his dinner plate to his bib and his big man fork today because he is eating he's eating like he's at a freaking all you can eat ponderosa who remembers ponderosa you remember ponderosa i don't know we had him here in ohio i'm assuming they were other places too um but anyways uh, restaurants aside here we just picked up a very good gain and now we got it to the six yard line and i kind of want this clock 
to tick down a little bit because I, we get the ball after halftime, and I would prefer Carolina not to have too much time to score. I think why stick to Terry should be able to get the job done. We shall see. They say forward progress gives him the touchdown. So there you go. That is exactly how we wanted to answer. And we're going to put up a 30 piece, actually a 31 piece, assuming I can make this kick. This is the best our offense has looked all season. And it's not even really close either. And it came at the best time. Now the Panthers do have a little bit over two minutes to operate a nice little two minute drill here and put some points on the board before halftime. Tell you what, chance for more points if the Panthers punt it here. So really for their sake, they need to do something here, because if we get the ball and somehow score again, it might be night, night time. Bryce Young wow. roll out. Nobody's on that side of the field. It's going to be huge yards. Bryce Young killing it on the ground. They're also going hurry up, too, so I got to be aware of that. Make sure that uh, nothing crazy happens. And I think I just got to kind of spy somebody in the middle of the field here, like Khalil Mack. There's Bryce again. This time, nowhere to go. Only a pickup of two. But they're still going hurry up here because I don't necessarily know why they're going hurry up. They got all their timeouts. It's going to be a little check down to Miles Sanders. That's not going to get it done. Or is it? And Sanders gets out of bounds to boot as well. I mean, they're on our 36-yard line. So I guess whatever Frank Reich decided to do, it worked. And that is going to be an early breakup. That was Emmanuel Forbes, your interception leader in the regular season. Now, they're going to take the points. I mean, I, I kind of feel like uh, Frank Wright is lacking testicles in this situation because it's fourth and inches. You're down by 21. You got it. You got to go for it. You got to go for it. And he didn't. He sent out Eddie Pinheiro. And I mean, we still have time. We still have about a minute to go and all three timeouts. So I don't agree. And I'm not going to, you know, go for anything crazy, but maybe open it up with some little screens or something like that. See if we can get some good chunk plays. And who knows? Let's test this little screen pass to Dudley on the left side. Just see what the, oh God, we have instant pressure. Dudley does catch it though. And the blocks are actually pretty good. That was our rookie center, Will Devlin, who just pancaked somebody. And that was a pretty decent pickup. I mean, it's definitely uh, enough to work with. Maybe Jahan on this play action deep shot could be good or possibly McLaurin. Now we're going to need some protection because these are some uh, rather long developing routes. But look at Jahan, so open and going to get out of bounds to boot. Frank Wright, you done effed up today, brother. You done effed up because you should have kept that drive going and you should have went for it, but you did not. You kicked the field goal. A, it was a gutless call. Uh, B, you have no testes. And C, you left way too much time on the clock because Dudley Saxton is here. And with 35 seconds, I mean, we're going to call a timeout, but we're already in scoring range. Coach says screen again, and I think that's a good call because we have two timeouts. We're in field goal range here. The last thing I want to do, I mean, regardless, we want to come away with points on this drive, whether it be a field goal, a touchdown, doesn't matter. And I'm telling you, man, I am telling you, these blocks, that was Damian Lewis and our center again, Will Devlin out there leading the way for Dudley. I feel like they didn't block like this for Bryant. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. And you can't even say, like, I'm, I'm looking to see, because I know in previous Maddens, you know, towards the end of the season, players would kind of get that uh, fatigue glitch. There's George Williams, big six foot niner. And we're going to go ahead and call our second timeout. Double slant. This is the call right here. Double slant. And you know what? If we don't get this, it's fine. As long as we don't turn the ball over, I'm okay kicking a field goal. All we're going to do is just extend that lead even more. But I think Curtis Samuel's open in the middle and J.J. Ford dots him. And I got to be honest, we're kind of running away from this one. 38 points in a half. Who would have thunk it? This is how I thought the first game would go. And the Panthers absolutely dominated us. All right, there's your first half. Definitely a shocker indeed. 38-13. And look at those rushing yards and look at those passing yards. It is just absolutely crazy. Now, we're the first game apparently on right now or maybe the – Thought the Niners and the Giants. I guess they're not going to show us. I think they played first. Or I thought they did anyways. Guess they're not going to show us what's going on there. But we don't care. 
Bring on the Giants. Bring on the 49ers. It does not matter. We are the sixth seed, so I feel like we would play the winner of the Eagles and the Bears game. Um, and the Giants would play. I don't know. I don't know. Look. Oh, ha wait. Highlights at halftime? You never see those. Oh, man. Why did I skip them? We cannot let our foot off of the gas. We have to play like this is a 0-0 zero, zero ball game because I I don't put anything past this game and or Madden. So let's just, oh no, what am I doing? I did not call the right play. I thought that was gonna be a handoff. It was a quarterback keeper from JJ Ford. And uh, we definitely, that's not the play that we wanna call at all. Definitely don't wanna call that play. So not the best way to uh, start the opening half here but that's okay we'll bounce back second and 11 we're coming out single back got a little bunch formation to our right need some good protection we're not going to get it so we're just going to check it down to curtis samuel and uh probably actually a good thing that he dropped that there it is i've been waiting for we haven't really had too many third and longs, so i was waiting for the coach to call that gun verticals play that i like so much but there really hasn't been any need to do it so let's pick up this third and long here. First time we've really been faced with some adversity. And George Williams had a chance. He's six foot nine, so I just kind of threw that thing up to him. But he did not have the soft hands on that one. I mean, you see how much taller he was than Von Bell. That is absolutely insane. But first time we've had to bring out Tress Way. That first play, man, that RPO that was a quarterback keeper from JJ Ford. I that was the wrong play to call. Oh, we just got juked out of our freaking gosh dang jock strap on that one but this is what i'm talking about you know uh, i realize there's still a huge hill to climb if you're frank reich in the panthers but still nonetheless i mean if they can punch this thing in it's back to a three score game and i i just i don't want that to happen i want this to be a blowout in every single facet of the imagination i want this to be a blowout so defense keep playing like it's a zero zero ball game Nice tackle there by Forbes, but Sanders is able to hang on. Little nickel blitz on a Friday afternoon. Never hurt anybody. And fun fact, it is actually Friday as I'm recording this. And oh my God, nobody there in the middle of the field to cover up Jonathan Mingo. And the Panthers, this is easily their best drive. And how many times have I said that on a team's opening drive coming out of halftime? Feel like probably a lot. I don't know. Somebody fact check me on that one. So let's see what Young does here coming out of the shotgun. We'll see if he does anything. Oh, Sanders. Okay, well, there you go. That was the Miles Sanders as a receiver drive because he caught about three balls, if my calculations were correct. And uh, just like that, we punt it on a terrible drive. Play calling by me. And the Panthers are now within 18. We're going to go back to what worked here in the first half. Outside zones to Dudley. So hopefully, Jahan Dotson, I know you're not really... A blocking receiver, but I need you to be one today. And there we go. Terry McLaurin certainly is a blocking receiver. Did you see the block that McLaurin held there on the outside? I mean, let me go back to the instant replay because that was pretty crazy. I mean, look at look at my man. Look at my man taking his job serious. Doesn't matter if he's catching deep bombs. Doesn't matter if he's streaking down the field. He is the opposite of what we saw from uh, George Pickens. <laughs> Second and seven here. Going to hit him with a little play action out of the I formation. And this has Terry written all over it. But it was really nice coverage there by Dante Jackson, the seven-year pro out of LSU. And now we are finding ourselves in third downs, which we did not really find ourselves in uh, too many of those, really, in the first quarter. So got to, again, play like the score is 0-0. Zero, zero, and let's pick this thing up. George Williams, can you pick it up? You got pretty darn close. Maybe a situation where I think that we go for it here. I know it is hyper aggressive, but I just feel like punting it back to the Panthers. That will hold. Now, if we don't get it, it's going to be really bad. Let's flip the play here because I don't want Brian Burns involved in this play at all, period. So screen to Dudley. Can we pick it up and keep the chains moving? We will. Just barely. Oh, my God. Ford almost got hammered there in the backfield. Ball is on Carolina's 42. We're going to come out single back. Another little play action rollout. And I think Terry's got this if we can lead it correctly. And JJ does. He's so accurate. But Terry pays the price 
as he is uh, going to be injured on that play. So hopefully it's just a little bump and a bruise. We could get him a shot and a pill and get him back on the field. Coach says PA cross single back and I like it. And you know what else I just realized? Guys, buckaroos, I haven't called the X bunch nasty play yet. So we still got that in the back pocket in case we need it. Who's going to get open on this one? Is it George Williams? Should have touched past that when I bullet passed it, but it is just so freaking hard to touch past it in this game. It's okay if we have to kick it, but remember, I am trying to be hyper aggressive. And there's Bart, and I swear that was a touch pass, man. What do I got to do? Freaking blow on my X button here, and Terry's not going to come back. Oh, man. My world's starting to crumble down upon me like it seems to do so often here in Madden. We need, um, what do we need here? Terry on a slant. Oh, that's not Terry. Terry's gone. Yeah, that's right. Curtis Samuel. I don't know. Dudley needs to block. I know that much. And see if any of these routes can get open. Um, we're going to test. It was the right read. It was the right call. I even pass led Brian Burns. No, it's not Brian Burns. It's Bart Burns. I even pass led Bart Burns down. But it's okay. We're going to kick a field goal. Go up by 21 again, hopefully. If I don't miss this, which I won't, or get a block kick, that would suck. So it's okay. Points on the board is good, but we just got to make sure Carolina doesn't score quick. Single back again. This time I got eyes on Sanders, so hopefully it's just going to be a run too for sure. Probably, and Sanders, we just can't tackle him. Jonathan Allen had a chance to get him. Emmanuel Forbes had a chance to get him. Finally, he was wrapped up, but not until after a gain of nine. And I did switch my game plan focus to... I think it was defend the medium pass because I just feel like that was what Carolina would do and hopefully that wasn't the wrong decision as it's looking like Sanders is the focal point of the offense now and he picks up another first down definitely keeping it interesting somebody must have told him uh you know help the TV ratings and don't make it too much of a blowout there's a nice break up there by Kendall Fuller who had two interceptions in the first half remember but the Panthers are at least keeping it interesting I would say and keeping some uh, loyal eyes glued on the television set, I would imagine. And we'll see what Bryce Young can do out of the single back. It's going to be Sanders again. He's breaking tackles left and right. Also potential horse collar tackle there by Justin Hayward. But the ref must have missed it. These must be the uh, refs that we got in the real NFL this season. Because the officiating, I think everyone can agree, has absolutely sucked Obvious passing situation here, so we're guessing pass, and we're shading inside. Young, it's a screen Bruh. pass, and the blocking's just too good. Miles Sanders able to pick up what the Panthers needed. I did not suspect screen pass on third and eight, but that's what Frank Reich dialed up. I'm still going pressure. Uh, we haven't really gotten... We might have one sack on Bryce Young, I want to say. Could we get our second right here or a pick? Emmanuel Forbes just got cooked. Wow, KJ Hamler. I... Don't know what happened there. I tried to use her control, Kendall, or Emmanuel Forbes, and he was just, like, frozen solid. So I think KJ Hamler must have just burned me too badly that the AI is like, yeah, dude, you're not going anywhere, so don't even try. Your, your ankles are literally broke right now. And, I mean, so far, we have three points in the third quarter. Panthers have 14. I like opening drive draw play to Dudley Saxton. That seems like it could be a good idea, and the blockers are decent enough. We have... Damian Lewis out there pushing the pile. Dudley at 13 rushes for 146 yards. And I'll tell you what, if the Panthers allow this to be the case, this is going to be the Dudley show. We just need to take a very large amount of time off of this clock because right now it will be a very difficult uh, comeback for the Panthers. And if we can just kill this clock as much as humanly possible, we should be able to get out of here with the win. And Dudley looking for blockers. Decent job pick up a four and the question here is the best thing to call okay this worked earlier and the coach is suggesting it i like dudley out of the pistol only need to pick up one now we got somebody coming up to the line here so i gotta id him up and still confident dudley can pick up one which he is not by much but just enough and i knew it was a good idea i saved this pa bunch PA cross, single back, X bunch, nasty. 
You guys know I only call it once per game and haven't called it yet because this is my secret weapon. Now, Curtis Samuels, usually over there in that circle. This time it's George Williams. So, but still, hopefully it doesn't matter if we could just get some good protection. There's George, baby. That's why I love that play. Oh, it is so OP, man. It is so OP. Right now it's a two-score game as well. Panthers down by 14. So, even kicking a field goal here. One would have to believe would seal this game away because it would be a three score game with probably around four minutes or so to go. And it would just probably be too much of a lead to, to come back from. And I did have to burn a timeout. You're probably wondering why. Maybe you're not. Maybe you didn't even realize it until I told you. But I was trying to find the PA uh, cross single back X bunch nasty. And I had a brain fart and couldn't freaking find it. And look at all these TE attacks, man. Look at all these TE attacks. Um, Yeah, no. No, we're not going to do that because there's no need. There's no need. We're going to run away from our blockers here. And knowing me, I would probably throw a pick or take a sack, a fumble, something like that. So outside run to Dudley is all we need to do. And this is why, because the blocking is so amazing. And Dudley nearing 200 yards in his playoff debut so far it's been the outside run but you know he's getting yardage on these draws he's juking but he's also fighting forward for yards moving the pile doing things that you would see a power back do i mean what more can you really ask for still going run here i know but less than gonna be about three minutes or so when the panthers get the ball or maybe dudley just scores i mean look at that look at that and as much as look here's the thing man I know anything can happen in Madden. So could I pick up fourth and one price score touchdown? Yeah, I probably could. But I want to go up 17 because then there's just really no possible way that the Panthers could come back. It would be seemingly impossible to do that. So why not just take the points, be safe, and get out of Bank of America Stadium with our first playoff dub in franchise history we got two minutes here guys panthers as i suspected just kind of slowly methodically moved it down the field they were going hurry up and we were playing blanket coverage so got to figure i kind of figured that would happen but that's okay they're eating the entire clock and that is that's all i want that's all literally all i want to happen i just want this clock to run out and then it's game over so the panthers really i mean they can even score for all i care only thing it's going to do is just make our stats look a little bit worse and make the score look a little bit worse. But aside from that, this is game. We're going to get our first playoff victory ever. And I honestly can't believe it. Back on Bryce Young, Justin Hayward is going to ice this thing. Frank Wright calling his timeouts, but it's not going to matter. A nice sack on Young from Justin Hayward, who I think is going to get snubbed for the defensive rookie of the year. He was holding those honors for quite a while. And, okay, they scored a touchdown. K.J. Hamler with his second. Whoopity-doo. Tentinals played great in this one. 44-34 is going to be your final score of the ballgame. Players of the game, Dudley Saxton, J.J. Ford, of course, and Kendall Fuller, who had those two first-half interceptions on Bryce Young. And even though this is kind of like the uh, got to talk about it because it's my favorite team in the world, the Packers and the Cowboys game, which, God, who saw that coming? But... Dak had all these yards, and they ended up scoring a lot of points. But that was all garbage time. Kind of the same as this. So Bryce Young, those two picks, was killer. That was their kryptonite in this game. J.J. Ford, again, just like last week, four touchdowns, zero picks. couple bullets that we did dodge in that one, but they did not result in picks. But look at Dudley. 22 carries, 182 yards, and we are going to get that little pregame challenge thing, I think. Um, or maybe it's com if it's combined yards, we won't. But whatever, I don't care. But yeah, Dudley, man, no touchdowns, but he had the yards to back it up. The big question mark, though, is will Terry be back in the next game? He was our leading receiver and did have a score as well. And uh, sacks, we got that one last-minute sack with Justin Hayward. And then, of course, the two picks from Kendall Fuller. But how about that, guys? Comment down below if you are hyped. Show me some fire emojis. Show me some hashtag Sentinels. I don't care. Hashtag Dudley. Whatever you want to do. But we just won our first playoff game. As the sixth seed in a wild card, we beat a team that was definitely the more dominant team the first time we played them. And it was a pretty 
convincing win at that. So let's see if Terry is going to be, I don't see one new injury. I do not see one new injury on here. So I think that Terry should be uh, good to go. Take a look at the injury report here and see if we're getting anybody back next week. We will be getting Brandon Scherf back next week, but still without Chase Young, still without Dante Fowler and still without Brian Robinson. But honestly, Brian Robinson can stay. So we do advance here. Moment of truth is, well, let me do these little scenario things. I won't even show you guys. And then we will check and see who we're playing next week. All right, moment of truth here. We're advancing to the next week, seeing who we are going to be taking on in the divisional. And look at that. It is a team we know very well. The Philadelphia Eagles, inner division foe. Um, so we beat them. I think we, what do we do? Split the series with them. Let's see what's going on around the league. So the Giants beat the Niners. Wow. So three NFC East teams in the, wait, no, all four, all four NFC East teams are still in the playoffs, right? Am I seeing that correctly? Yeah. It's literally the Giants and the Cowboys and the Sentinels and the Eagles. So literally the entire NFC East moved on. Wow. And you know what? That makes sense because our division was the most competitive that I've probably ever seen. Bengals beat the Chiefs, so revenge from last year's AFC Championship contest. Uh, the Chargers beat the Ravens. Wow. So upsets across the board here. And then the Titans beat the Patriots in the Mike Vrabel Bowl. So interesting. I can't believe the entire NFC. It took me a minute to register that. But yeah, that's, that's what's going on here. So one of these four teams that you see in front of you will be representing the NFC in the Super Bowl. Will it be the Sentinels? I don't know. Find out in a future episode. But that's going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.